everyone, this is Unger. This is Unger to the Max here, coming at you with another Columbus Blue Jackets player watch. Tonight, the Blue Jackets are on the road at XL Energy Center to take on the Minnesota Wild. And surprisingly, tonight is the Wild's home opener. They've been on the road for the first three games. At Detroit, at Carolina, and at Chicago. So... They'll be excited to be at home tonight, finally. Meanwhile, for Columbus, their schedule has gone Islanders at home, at Chicago, at Carolina, home to the Rangers last night. So, time for the player watch. Starting with Minnesota, starting with the Minnesota Wild. And the first guy I want to talk about is Miko Koivu. Through three games this season, Koivu has two goals and no assists. He's, but, here's one thing. He shoots left-handed. So, I said this about one of the Rangers players last night. Because he shoots left-handed, I think you might, the Blue Jackets sh should try and force him to go right. See if he can beat, see if he can beat the Blue Jackets trying to go right-handed. Maybe it's Maybe it's a strategy that will work. In his NHL career of 846 games, he scored 181 goals and has 435 assists. So those numbers might seem a little out of balance. And you might think, oh, Miko Koivu is more an assist guy than a goal scoring guy. I don't agree with that. I think... He's good at setting up his teammates to get shots, but I consider him to be more of a goal scorer, so sometimes those numbers can be a little bit deceiving. In, the in his career, when the Wild have made it to the playoffs, Koivu's played in 50 playoff games and has 11 goals and 13 assists. So, he's not bad when it comes to the playoffs. But overall, he's a good player. I'm not, just because this is a Blue Jackets video, doesn't mean I'm going to try and diss the other team in any way. The Wild are a good team, and I respect them. I just hope Columbus beats them tonight. Next guy from Minnesota is Mike, Michael Mikael Granlund. I might have said that wrong. Through one game this season that he's played, he has zero goals and zero assists. So, I don't know what to say about him, really. I, he's a playmaker, I'll say that. He does, yes, he, as I say, he has zero goals and zero assists. But, don't let those numbers fool you. That doesn't mean because... Just because he has no goals and no assists does not mean that he is, hasn't been involved in the play in some way. Like I said yesterday with the, a couple of the Rangers players, even if you're not getting the assist or the goal, you might be bringing the opponent's defenders away from the player with the puck and giving them a clear lane to shoot at. So, those type of things don't show up in the stats, but they're beneficial. And I think Granlund does that because he's a threat to score. Although he has not scored yet this season. In his NHL career, which is 322 games, Granlund has 57 goals and 144 assists. So, he's a bit more of an assist man, but I also consider him a goal scorer. So, overall, I just consider him a playmate. Next for Minnesota, Jason Zucker. This guy, for some reason, seems to give Columbus problems. I'm not sure why, but when we played Minnesota last year in Minnesota, he had, if I remember right, he had one of the better, a good game against us both times when we played them in Minnesota and in Columbus. So, he, 
Zilker might be the guy I'm most concerned about with Minnesota. Through three games this season, he already has two goals and two assists. So, even Steven. And that just shows that he's all around a really good player. In 26 games in the playoffs, he has four goals and four assists. And through 251 games in his NHL career, 66 goals, 46 assists. So that's only a 20, 20, a 20, 20 point margin between goal, the amount of goals he has and the amount of assists he has. So, but again, Zucker, I th it's him and Koivu that I'm most concerned about tonight for Minnesota. Those are their two, those are their two primary guys. Because Granlin might not be out there. And Parise, who there is usually, their other Minnesota's other usual big threat, might not be out there tonight for Minnesota. So that might be somebody that we don't have to worry about. Kyle Quincy. He might not play a lot tonight for Minnesota, but the reason I want to talk about him is because he used to he is because Columbus traded for him last season. And he played for the Blue Jackets for about half the season. We got him at the trade deadline. And now he's playing for Minnesota. So, he might be a factor. Maybe. We'll see. Through three games, he has two assists. No goals. And I'm also noticing something as I'm checking out the players for Minnesota. A lot of them like are left-handed shooters. Which I find to be very interesting. Could that maybe the strategy of forcing Minnesota to go to the right would, wouldn't be that bad of an idea? I don't think you can do that the entire game, though. Minnesota would adjust. So, it'll be interesting to see what type of strategy. So, let's talk about their two goalies. Devin Dubna. He's started in two games this season, has one win, one loss, has allowed six goals in total, and has allowed six, 69 shots, and his save percentage is 0 .93. 9, 1, 0 .913, sorry. And then their, their goalie is Alex Stapp. Stalock. He started one game, and that game went into overtime. He allowed four goals, allowed 42 shots, and his save percentage was .905. Now on to your Columbus Blue Jacket. The Jackets did exactly what I said they should do. They they played a tough style against New York. They played fast. They didn't let New York play the physical up style game that New York that the Rangers I think like to play. And that's important because Minnesota I think is going to try and play that same sort of strategy. Minnesota the Wild are a physical team. So Columbus needs to try and get up and down the ice to try and prevent Minnesota from being that physical style team that they are known for being. So, a lot of the, and many of the guys that I talked about last game stepped up. But I want to talk about a couple different guys. And one guy that I unfortunately forgot to mention. So let's start with him. And I, when I do player watches from now on, this will be a guy I don't leave out. Because he's probably one of my favorite players on the Blue Jackets. From the University of Michigan, it's Zach, defenseman Zach Wierenski. Through 82 games, he has 12 goals and 38 assists. 
in 2017-2018, so this season, in four games, he has one goal and two assists, and in three games played in the playoffs, because he didn't get to play all five games of the series, thanks to an injury he got in game three against Pittsburgh, but he had one goal. So, and he was a big contributor in 2016 when the Monsters won the state, the Calder Cup. But, Wierenski is, yes, he's a defenseman, but you'll find him involved in almost every aspect of the game. It's, it's interesting that the, he's a defenseman, but Columbus likes to use him in many different ways. Like, they'll, he likes to get up near the goal and shoot on net. He also can be a physical player. So I like that he's able to, um, he's able to adapt to many different wit styles. He can adapt to being a physical player if he has to. Although I think he's more fit for being a speed player. He play, he can play, adapt and play many different styles. And I really like that about him. His defense, the other guy I want to talk about for defense, Seth Jones. The guy Zach Wierenski is usually paired with. Through four games this season, he has one goal and two assists. In his career in the playoffs, which is 11 games, zero goals, six assists. In his NHL career, 319 games, 30 goals, 98 assists. The reason why I like Seth Jones is because him and Zach Wierenski play really well off, play really well with each other. Seth Jones is that bigger, hard, more hard-hitting guy, while we're, while we're, Wierenski is the guy who's not afraid to get up near the goal and score goals. But that's not to say Seth Jones can't score goals, because he can. He just doesn't always need, he just doesn't need to. He's not, I don't consider him to be a, primary goal scorer, but it's really good when he contributes and scores a goal or gets an assist, but he contributes in many other ways, like opening up the lane, opening up the ice for our forwards and our centermen by hitting the opponents and allowing those players to, um, and allowing guys like Josh Anderson, Nick Foligno, Pierre Luc Dubois, to Artemi Panarin, to allow and allows those guys to get lanes to the goalie and get shots on goal. Next guy, Artemi Panarin. He got his first goal this season for Columbus. Yes. Yesterday against New York. He has one goal and three assists in his first season with Columbus. I'd say he's fitting in pretty nicely here. He's really, he's on our first line. And I don't remember who else is on our first line. But he's fitting in really nicely. He's paired with, he's playing really well with his teammates. He's not being a puck hog, which mean which is the same thing as a ball hog. But he's doing really well so far. And I can't I think he's only gonna bring more and more success. He has Stanley Cup final experience. He has playoff experience. And I really like that. And I think it brings nothing but positivity to this Columbus Blue Jackets team. The final guy I want to talk about is our goalie, Sergei Bobrovsky, who played outstanding last game against New York, giving up only one goal. In three games this season, Sergei is 3-0, with shots, shots allowed being 105, two goals allowed. 
That's ridiculous. He already has one shutout, 5 nothing over the New York Rangers on opening night. And his save percentage, save percentage is .981. Now that's pretty impressive. So it's going to be a tough game tonight. Minnesota's playing in front of their home crowd for the first time. The Blue Jackets are playing on a back-to-back -back night. So, even though the Blue Jackets are coming off a win, unfortunately, I don't think I see the Blue Jackets getting the win tonight. I think it's going to be... But, it's going to be a tight game. I think... Hmm. 2-1 to one Minnesota. Unfortunately, I think the score will be 2-1 to one Minnesota Wild with the win. So, that's going to do it for now. I will see you next time with another Columbus Blue Jackets player watch. This is Wine Gold Unger. Correction, Unger to the max, signing off.